Hello, and welcome to Pages from Apache County History with Dolly Patterson. In 2013, I joined the board of the Apache County Historical Society Museum here in St. John's, and I also started volunteer volunteering there as time permitted. One of the first projects I took on was to do a rough inventory of items in the archives. As I was doing this inventory, I stu stumbled across an item that was particularly fascinating to me, and it ended up being the topic of three different posts on my blog, and it's the topic of today's video. It's a pretty interesting story, and I hope you enjoy. It was an old poster honoring a regiment from the Spanish-American War. It was in quite a state of deterioration, and so I began snapping photos of it in an attempt at some kind of preservation. I left the museum that day completely intrigued at this item, and why in the world it was in our little museum. I began searching the web for more information, and discovered that this first territorial regiment, that has been referred to as the Forgotten Regiment, was led by Arizona Governor Myron McCord, who resigned his office as governor, to organize and command an all-Arizona infantry regiment. They are called the Forgotten Regiment because they never actually saw battle. There is a reference to St. John's on the bottom of the poster, but a section is missing, and so I still didn't know what this had to do with St. John's or why it was in our museum. I continued researching for some weeks to try and find the connection, and finally hit the jackpot in a historical Arizona newspaper article that I found through the Arizona Memory Project. In the Arizona Weekly Minor, dated 6 of July, 1898, I came across an article that listed the volunteer officers for McCord's regiment. I was re reading down through it, and there was the connection. 2nd Company, C. E. Donaldson of Prescott, Captain, F. C. Hochdorfer of Flagstaff, and Walter G. Scott of St. John's, Lieutenants. Walter G. Scott and his wife Mary came to St. John's around 1889 and were only here until 1899. Prior to that, they lived in Prescott, and he worked for the Arizona Weekly Minor newspaper. Even though they were only here a short time, he was very involved in the community and contributed to St. John's history. Sometime in 1889, they moved to St. John's and ran a little hotel out of what would later be the Barth Hotel. Mrs. Scott was the hostess of the Scott House for seven years. In 1896, they closed the Scott House and turned the building back over to the owner, Solomon Barth who transformed it back into a private residence and moved in. A newspaper clipping from the time stated this about Mrs. Scott. The traveling public will miss the hospitable greeting and kind treatment Mrs. Scott always extended to them on their visits to St. John's. Her long service to the public in this capacity has endeared her to everyone who had had the occasion to visit the county seat. Visit the county seat. Some of the various roles that Walter Scott played in Apache County are Notary Public, Immigration Commissioner, Court Commissioner, Newspaper Editor for a Time of the St. John's Herald, Captain of a National Guard Unit in St. John's known as Company K, Attorney and District Attorney. He was friends with Isaac Barth and a group of local men who enjoyed fishing trips to the Black River. Newspaper articles mention social engagements that he and his family were involved in, including a winter social club party at their house in March of 1896. And I learned something new, as I usually do in researching these historical figures. The article states several times that it is a whist party. At first I thought it was a typo, but after it appeared several times I decided to Google that term. Whist is a classic English trick-taking card game which was widely played in the 18th and 19th centuries. I had never heard of it before and it was tickled to learn this new bit of trivia. The article reads in part, all in all, as a social function, the whist party at the home of Captain and Mrs. Scott will long be remembered by those who were fortunate enough to be present. 
and will stand out a prominent landmark in the history of social events in St. John's. Guests included Dr. and Mrs. Craig, Mr. and Mrs. Antonio Gonzalez, Carlotta Barth, Cecilia Barth, Amelia Hunt, Mr. and Mrs. W. H. Burbage, Monica Garcia, Jerry Gonzalez, Porter Rollins, and more. After joining McCord's volunteer regiment and being mustered in at Fort Whipple near Prescott, they headed to Lexington, Kentucky in October of 1898, but by December of 1898 were in Camp Churchman at Albany, Georgia, as indicated in the following letter sent to David King Udall by Walter Scott in December of 1898, which was then published in the newspaper. The following is a letter from Walter G. Scott, Camp Churchman, Albany, Georgia, dated December 26, 1898. Honorable D.K. Udall, Dear Sir, Yours is the 16th instant, and I was very much gratified to hear from you directly. In regards to the men from St. John's, I would say that they are regarded as among the very best in the regiment. Upon the organization of the company, Fred Davis was made a sergeant and is now the first duty sergeant of the company. Elijah Holgate is a corporal and is now acting in the capacity of postmaster at division headquarters at Columbus. I think they like him very well at General Sanger's headquarters. Andrew Peterson has been the company clerk ever since we were mustered into the service at Fort Whipple and has recently been appointed corporal. These are all the men who came with me from St. John's. Not one of them has ever given the officers a bit of trouble, neither have they ever been in the guardhouse. I am very much gratified in regard to the manner in which these boys have conducted themselves. They, one and all, have done their duty without any shirking, and I do not think that any of them have ever been on the sick report, and certainly none of them have ever been a single day in the hospital. Fred Davis is by far the finest looking man in the regiment and is also one of the best known. For the last few weeks, he has been acting as color sergeant and he makes a very fine appearance at dress parade as he marches past bearing the regimental flag. Captain Donaldson of this company, together with myself, are trying to have him permanently appointed as color sergeant. You are at liberty to show this letter to all our friends and particular particularly to the relatives and friends of these men. Yours truly, Lieutenant Walter G. Scott, Company C, 1st Territorial Regiment, USA Infantry, Camp Churchman, Albany, Georgia. Shortly after returning from serving in McCord's Volunteer Regiment, Walter purchased the newspaper, The Safford Arizonian, and with his family moved to Graham County, Arizona, where he once again worked as a newspaper editor and a lawyer. Here's a transcription of the article. The Safford Arizonian has changed hands. A. D. Webb retiring and Walter G. Scott of St. John's Apache County taking the helm. The Arizonian has been an excellent little local paper and Mr. Scott promises to make efforts to continue to merit the support of the Graham County Arizona Gazette. The people of St. John's and Apache County can assure the people of Safford and Graham County that the Arizonian will continue to be an excellent paper for Lieutenant Scott has been connected with the Herald in the past. We shall be sorry to lose Lieutenant Scott from our midst, but our loss will be another's gain. The Scott family lived in Graham County for a few years before moving to Globe in Gila County. He was very involved in both communities. However, by 1910, it seems he was having some problems. I found a few newspaper articles detailing his disappearance from the Globe, Miami area in April 1910. It appears that he was having financial difficulties and had been drinking heavily in Miami before mysteriously disappearing. He was spotted by a few people, but no one really knew where he was headed or what was happening. He was found about four days later in Safford when he contacted the sheriff back in Globe seeking transportation back to that city.
He claimed that his mind was a blank as to what occurred after his disappearance. He had apparently walked the greater part of the distance between Globe and Safford, and was in pretty pitiful condition when given assistance by friends in Safford. He was transported back to Globe and locked up on an embezzlement charge. He claimed he didn't remember most of the time between his disappearance and arriving in Safford, and that as soon as he saw a newspaper article in Safford about his being missing, he telegraphed the sheriff in Globe. He claimed to have securities which I can turn into money to meet any shortage which may be found in my accounts. A follow-up article on April 19th related that he would probably settle his matters out of court and escape prosecution. He was released on his own recognizance and was working to make good his accounts. I have found articles in later years about a Walter G. Scott, but I'm not convinced that it's the same person. I have searched and searched in vain to find a death record for him, but to no avail. I have searched Ancestry, Family Search, Find a Grave, the Arizona Memory Project, Newspapers.com, and Arizona Historical Death Records, and have found nothing on his death. So, this gentleman who spent 10 years in St. John's and was an active player in early county history mysteriously fades into the distant past, almost to be forgotten. But I'm determined not to let that happen. Thank you for joining us and watching this episode, and hope you enjoyed it. And please join us again next time for another page from Apache County History.